You know, Zimbabwe has had independence for 38 years now, almost 40 years. And I haven't seen that progression of political freedom translating into the freedom of the people themselves. So what was the political situation like five years ago, 2013? I'd say relatively better than it was five years prior to that, but uh, heading towards a very, very dark and scary place. And I think that's where we, where we see ourselves today. Income became less, less predictable, um, shall I say. For me, what that meant was, you know, fees wasn't able to be paid on time. And it meant my mother literally did not know when she was going to be paid and how much she was going to be paid. She could not guess and she could not predict. I do not think of security as not having terrorist attacks or equating not having terrorist attacks. I think I equate peace to prosperity and if the country is actually having real peace. Uh, before the revolution, it was just a surface trying to tell the world that we're peace, but deep inside, people were unemployed, people did not have uh, full access to all the opportunities that they're supposed to. My mom and my uncles were in prison in 1991, and my uncle didn't see his daughter for 16 years trying to fight for basic human rights like freedom and uh, ba like the right to vote um, and the right to have free speech. Uh, and the revolution brought that to us. We only discovered a lot of cases of extreme poverty after the revolution because the media was prohibited to show all of these things. So a lot of people think of Tunisia post-revolution as an insecure and an unpeaceful country, um, but it has been fake security for decades. There's a lot of sexism that's still ingrained in where I come from, like on my father's side, there's still FGM that happens in our community. I think it's something that you really have to, um, you have to be strong with it in yourself. And as soon as you're strong with it in yourself, I think it's something that you can start to convince the people around you. So there's women in the Maasai communities who have decided that, hey, we're not gonna let this happen anymore and I saw recently a video on Facebook of a Maasai woman who had been the first woman to meet with the elders in her community to talk about the practice of FGM and she had actually managed to to change the way that Maasai, the, that particular group of Maasai does their rites of passage by and removing FGM from their rites of passage. We have free education. I can get my college degree for free. I can get my high school degree for free. To go to a specialized doctor, I pay five dollars. Like that's nothing compared to what you have to pay in developed countries like the US and the UK and South Africa, right? Like when you look at all of these statistics, it looks great, but it has been the same system since the independence. It hasn't evolved with the time and with the changes that are happening in the world. That's the kind of system we're living in right now. Um, exorbitant prices and they seem to be increasing by the day and people don't necessarily understand that the more the prices increase, they're also reducing the, the chances of foreign currency coming in. Because the more you pay to, to, to bring in products, the less money you have to give to the people. And the less money they have, the less money they have to spend on these products. So it's, it's, it's a vicious cycle that's, that's, that's economically happening in Zimbabwe right now. One of the personal commitments I've made and I will continue to make is with my SE Afrofeminism, which, is, which I started with a few friends on campus. Our big picture goal is to ed educate and sensitize the African youth on feminism and incorporate feminism into the narrative for African development. So what we're doing is starting from, you know, from, from the bottom, from everyday interactions with people and trying to get people to talk about things that they don't usually talk about and saying, hey, come to the table, let's have a discussion. So I think if you're a Zimbabwean right now and you truly care about your economic well-being into the future and you have, you're farsighted, then the best thing you can do is, you know, take back political control of your country. We need to mitigate the fact that Zimbabweans are only thinking to survive and we also need to introduce them to this aspect of thinking to thrive as a people, thinking to thrive politically, economically, socially, think of moving the country forward. Even if they do it on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, progression is incremental, nothing's ever been done in a day. And I feel like if we can have both of those mindsets running concurrently, at least for the moment, 
then we, 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 we can find ourselves in a better place in the future. Educating the masses about the importance of politics in their country is one thing that I hope to try and do in the, in the longer run, in the long run. And obviously, making them understand how policy decisions affect them on a, on a greater scale.